Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you again. So today, started out making a knife for a viewer and ended up making one of these. Let me show you how that happened. Thanks guys. We'll talk at the other end. So we have a loose spring off of a, oh, it's like a 1968 Ideal Travel Trailer. Um, somebody parted it out and I've had these springs around for a while. And I'm going to use this particular spring to start making Mr. Al Anderson's knife from. It doesn't fit in the forge, so, hmm. Oh, we can open the door. All right. So, anyway, uh, I'm making a replica knife for Al. He sent me a knife that his grandfather made his grandmother back in the 50s. And uh, he wanted a replica made of it. And the original cleaned up so he can keep it as a keepsake. So we're going to straighten the end of this leaf spring out and uh, get it under uh, Floyd to put a tang in it. Floyd is the press in the shop. And he does a pretty good job. So I'm just uh, separating a tang on this thing and I'll finish it up on the anvil once I get it close to where I want and uh, really worried just about the shoulder and the basic size at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is uh, forge this tang in, and then we'll, like I said, get to the anvil, clean it up. A couple of heats here, and we'll get it nice, looking nice and pretty. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the tang and the knife length out of this because all we're worried about right now is just defining the shoulder between the tang and the uh, blade all right we'll cut her there and there and that should give us some plenty of material to start with on this project and it's because this knife is uh, a little unique in its construction the way it's put together so this leaf spring is pretty thick. It's a little more than a quarter of an inch thick and I could have forged it down thinner. There's the knife. And I started uh, outlining this and had to go get my gloves on. It's about uh, 28 degrees in the shop right now as I'm doing this. And we're gonna define those shoulders right there on the two by 72. And once we get these shoulders defined, the rest of that material, I think we'll cut it off with a, uh, a hard stone grinding or cutting wheel in the big grinder, a nine inch angle grinder. And it'll save us a little bit of time on the belt grinder here. And as I'm working on this thing, I'm realizing there is a lot of grinding to do on this and I've got to get rid of a bunch of weight and the thickness of this thing and uh, I keep thinking more and more that yeah we're gonna go take an angle grinder that there's a lot of material to move there so I keep thinking more and more that uh, I've got to get my surface grinder built and uh, I had ordered in parts and pieces, I've been working on getting pieces and parts in for quite some time. And the one thing that I've been looking for is a contact wheel. Because I want to use a four inch wide belt on it. Uh, they're like a four by 48 belt. And I can get them pretty easily, high quality belts. And the magnet that I've got, the switching type magnet that I've got for the thing is six inches wide so that'll cover a good portion of the center little big dog's running around the shop there i won't throw any sparks at her there we go and this is a lot quicker than the two by 72 good doggy that tang to length make sure we're still within our knife size that we're looking for all right 
right and we'll go refine this a little bit more on the 2x72 so trying to find a contact wheel for a surface grinder to run a belt on that's four inches wide is not the easiest thing in the world I really couldn't find any out there everything's made for a, a 2x72 or 2 inch wide belt and I started looking at uh, specialty grinders and things like that that are made that are uh, like benchtop belt grinders and you can get those wheels for those things they're a nice uh, like a urethane covered aluminum contact wheel it's four inches wide about five or five and a half inches across and uh, man they're expensive the two or three that I priced out they were anywhere from uh, 350 bucks to down about 280 and there was one out there for almost four hundred dollars so I decided that I am going to try to make my own contact wheel and you can see the thickness on that blank that I've got going there they need to reduce that and about the only way I'm going to be able to do that is on a surface grinder it would take me forever on a 2x72 so I've got this piece of pipe and it's uh, four and a half inches and I cut off a four inch section of that and this is a piece of two inch solid mild steel and it's going to be the hub in our contact wheel we put a one inch hole in it and we're going to face it off and clean it up because we're going to weld some spokes to this thing that will uh, we can machine down that will fit inside that pipe so we're manufacturing this thing I could you know, fabricating it I could have cast it out of aluminum however all of my casting materials are put away for the winter and fabricating this one off just didn't seem that bad so I cleaned up the outside of the pipe and just cleaning up the inside enough to weld to and when I put the spokes on that center hub I cut some uh, 5 8 inch square about one inch long pieces and welded them you know four spokes right there you go and I didn't turn the camera on on that but you can see what I did I just MIG welded them into place and drill a hole for a set screw so that we can mount this thing on a one inch stainless steel shaft I'll put a keyway in it eventually but this is just to hold it in place while I get it in the lathe and even up those spokes now having a lathe on this project made it all possible if I didn't have the lathe I would never have been able to even tackle this and I wasn't really sure how it was going to come out my biggest fear is it's going to have some sort of harmonic vibration there we go so we got her in the lathe and I turned it down and I took it down couple of thousands too far the first time around you can see some little mig welds on the end of those spokes and I put some tacks on there and uh, remachined it I want it on there nice and tight push this thing up against the chuck on the lathe and I'm gonna grab the mig welder once I'm convinced it's running true and we're gonna tack those spokes into place and of course I got in the way of the camera but you get the idea here all right got some good tacks on those guys and we'll pull them off that shaft and go put some full welds on that thing all right we got her all welded up back on the shaft and the weld did a little bit of distortion on the outside of the thing so we're going to clean this drum up one more time and this pipe, the thickness is uh, started out a little more than a quarter inch thick wall. So we've got plenty to deal with here. Plenty that we can take off and clean it up, make it nice and true. 
and it'll take a little bit of weight off of it as well. This thing's going to end up weighing about three pounds, which is quite a bit, but it's fairly small. So it shouldn't have too much vibration in it. All right. So I ordered in some urethane, castable urethane, two-part liquid. And I'm going to pour that liquid around this wheel. And I found this old Tupperware container that's just about perfect. It's going to give me about 3 8 inch rubber all the way around. So I slid it down the side so I could peel it off easier. And this is a PVC tape that I'm uh, taping this back up with. I don't want it to leak out. There we go. Little blacksmith scissors working great. And we're going to go around just to make sure that that holds together. Now I'm not sure if this urethane actually creates heat or how much heat. It may melt this plastic thing. I don't know. Alright, so my little quarter inch rods. Lean them over a little bit. And they're going to give me a, a nice even gap all the way around. So, we got this stainless steel plate. It's an old platen off another old grinder I used to have. And I'll put some RTV around the bottom of this, just silicone, to keep the urethane from leaking under the wheel and filling it up on the inside. And what I'm doing there is I'm just taking some cooking oil as a parting agent, putting it on the inside of that Tupperware container. I get everything even up here, and I'm going to hot glue it to the base. And I will run hot glue all the way around to seal this thing up. And I'm putting an excessive amount, making sure it's up on the Tupperware thing and down on the base just to make sure this thing doesn't leak. I don't want urethane running out all over the desk. So I'll put a link in the description below to the website where you can find this stuff. It was relatively inexpensive. I think I paid oh, about 70 bucks or something for a gallon of this stuff, which might seem expensive, but when you compare it to a $300 contact wheel for a grinder, it's relatively cheap, or it will be if this works. <laughs> so, they say you've got six minutes worth of working time. I found you got about ten, actually. And what I did is I had it on a scale, and I measured the two parts out by weight um, and the mm, plastic pitcher that I've got there has... Um, measurements on it as well so I went by volume and by weight and they both came out pretty close all right so here we are two hours later you got six minutes worth of work time and you're supposed to take it out of its mold in two hours to let it cure and set up and it feels a little tacky it's uh, definitely a little sticky on the outside but you're supposed to give it, uh, I don't know, 24 hours, I think is what their website said. So we get it busted loose from this plate. And there we go. We'll let it sit overnight. And get back to it in the morning. And here we are. It is the next morning. It's not sticky anymore. It's good and hard rubber. It's about the consistency of a car tire. And you can see it's got sort of a bell shape. That one into that uh, container, it was a little wide. So apparently what you do, never knew this before, learned a few things. You put the thing in the freezer for a couple of hours and you freeze it. And then you can put it on your lathe and you can pretty much machine it down without too much of a problem. And you don't get an exact measurement, but you can clean it up, square it off, and make it true. And that's really all I was after. And I ended up with about a quarter inch of rubber outside my four and a half inch drum. So I ended up uh, five inches overall. So it's four and a half wide, five inches across. 
and it cleaned up pretty well. But we're going to test this thing. I've got an old bench grinder that I cobbled together years ago for a project. I had a bunch of grinding to do and I needed something with a heavier motor than normal. We're going to mount this thing on this grinder and uh, see if it just causes any vibration. With any luck at all, it'll run nice and smoothly. But we will see. I'll uh, take a little bolt and stand it up on this machine. And uh, if it's got any vibration to it, it will just fall off there. But it seems to be doing really well. Alrighty, our first piece of surface grinder. I'm excited. Alright guys, that worked out really, really well. Saved a bunch of money making this thing. And it's the first piece to our surface grinder, which is going to make the knife making and Damascus making projects in the shop a whole bunch easier. So uh, this worked out a lot better than I thought it would. Alright guys, thanks for sticking with me through it. And uh, if you liked the video, why don't you hit the like button? And if you think about it, if you haven't subscribed already, why don't you hit the subscribe and share the videos as well with all your friends. Because sharing is good. Alright guys, thanks for stopping by. Really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. And most of all, be safe. Bye now.